I built an auto sentry turret that is capable of tracking humans and shooting them on sight. Killjoy is Valorant's genius German engineer in the yellow puffer. She uses her sentry to play lockdown defense and pick off enemies. And I made a fully functional prototype of her turret. Since you guys blew up my last project, Boomy, I was able to partner with Red Bull for this project. In six months, I brought the turret from game to reality just in time to travel to LA, film with Red Bull and Keo, and attend the Valorant World Champions tournament. Let us begin. We're gonna start with the shooting mechanism. I wanted to have enough power to shoot someone across the room. I ordered this gel blaster and I think it's gonna be perfect. Let's test it out. <laughs> this thing shoots super fast, but it definitely jams, so we're gonna have to tinker with that to fix it. My plan was to put the gearbox inside the main compartment of the turret. There also needs to be a large hopper to put ammo in this cylinder. Now the question is, how do we transfer rounds from the back in the storage container to the front to be shot? I found this motorized magazine and I thought I could recreate my own that loads Orbeez through a feeding tube. Also, the Orbeez jams super easily and Chicken Skunk from my Discord gave me some amazing advice. I'm new to the Blaster community and he recommended checking out Nerf Rival. Out of Dart sells a proton pack which feeds into a Jupiter blaster, which looks perfect for a KJ turret. The way it works is that a feeding motor pushes rounds one at a time through the chamber, where they meet the flywheels that spin super fast and propel the round forward. It also uses a vacuum hose to transport rounds jam-free to the blaster. I purchased my own proton pack in Jupiter, and I am so impressed with the quality. The people at Out of Darts are freaking awesome. The motors spin at 35,000 RPM, or almost 600 times a second. Wow. The Jupiter is normally actuated by a trigger in the handle, but I replaced that with the relay to control how often to shoot with software. Let's test it out. Now let's work on the loading mechanism. I wired up this brushless motor and wrote some code to control its speed. Basically, it spins super fast and has an impeller fan on the end. This creates a suction force that feeds the rounds through a vacuum tube. Now let's take the thing that shoots and put it inside turret. These are printed parts that I don't have the files for, so I thought I might invest in a 3D scanner. Except they're really expensive. So basically, I decided to do it my own ratty way and scan the parts on a 2D scanner. It gave me high quality resolution pictures of the profiles that I could then bring into CAD to trace and nail down the position of the mount holes. Then I started modeling the turret head. The overall turret height will be a little over two feet, which feels pretty accurate to the game. Also, the turret head just fits on my print bed. Let's go. I hooked up the proton pack in Jupiter to Timmy Mark 1, and let me tell you, Timmy packs a punch. <laughs> For the Mark 1, we've used this green area. And for the Mark 2, we're going to use this red area to create a recoil mechanism. I ordered a linear actuator that wasn't as snappy as I would have liked. So I tried a solenoid instead, and it seemed promising. The turret head will be attached to this linear bearing to allow for smooth railing. I printed out Timmy Mark 2, and it works. Kind of. It seems promising in a quick test, but when slanted downwards, the solenoid spring is not strong enough to return the turret head against gravity. I'm thinking I'll add a stronger spring or add two solenoids opposite one another so it could deploy and retract. John from Instagram recommended having an outer shell that slides along an inner shell instead of sliding the entire system to save weight. Honestly, the solenoids kind of suck for this because they just don't perform well under any form of weight. This is a slip gear mechanism. The pinion gear meshes with the rack and it's driven forward as it rotates. Only the pinion doesn't have all of its gear teeth and the back has a rubber band attached to it so once the gear runs out of teeth that mesh the rack slings back and resets its position. This is perfect for recoil. I printed out the new parts and assembled the mechanism. I played with different variations of gear teeth until I reached the desired recoil effect I was going for. Also, before you guys say anything, yes, the recoil is going forward. Usually it goes backwards. The turret in game actually recoils forwards and I was just matching that. Once I got the slip gear mech working, it was all about nailing the timing and matching the game. Next, let's work on Timmy's ability to look around. I hopped into SolidWorks and created arms that hold the turret head up. The turret head should be able to swivel up and down and also left to right. I hid motors in each arm and designed a one to two gear train. Basically, all that means is that the turret head will move twice as fast as the motor driver gear. I did this so that it can quickly snap the targets. However, this cuts the strength of the motors in half. Let's see if it works. And it doesn't. Instead of a two to one gear ratio for increased speed, I tried a one to two gear ratio for increased torque. The turret head is cantilevered, which means it's only supported at one end. I decided to slide over the arms as much as possible without it looking too strange in the model. I also upgraded the servos to these big boy motors and installed a counterweight, and the turret is much more stable now. I then assembled the parts for the left right swivel. This one is way less complicated because it has a shorter lever arm. Now we're cooking. 
Now let's work on the tracking. This is a Husky lens. It's an AI vision sensor that uses machine learning to recognize its environment. My initial plan was to use facial recognition to track enemies. But what if the enemies turned around or really far away? It also has object recognition, which includes people. For some reason, this mode doesn't only include people. It also detects dogs. Sorry, Lucky. The plan is to detect a person, but when a person is seen, switch to color recognition mode to check to see if they're wearing yellow. If they're wearing yellow, don't shoot. They're friendly. If they aren't, light them up, Timmy. Started teaching the sensor what the yellow KJ jacket looks like so it could remember it later. It's best to get varying angles and distances. The rounds are the same yellow, so that may be an issue later. Timmy will steer until the target is centered, but won't move at all if the color check is positive for yellow. However, I want the human box and yellow box to overlap to not pick up random yellow in the shot. My first thought was to create a matrix of all the points for each box and then check if any of those points are the same. Then I realized you could only check the corners because they represent the minimum and maximum of ranges for each box. I actually cheated and used ChatGPT to write me an Arduino script to see if two boxes are overlapping. All I had to do was modify it from my code and it actually worked. It sees a person and does a quick color check. Boom, right there. Is he friendly? Yes, don't shoot him. Now move the balls to the side of Ross. It looks for human, sees yellow on the side, not overlapping. Is he friendly? No, shoot him. Next, I added back in the firing mechanism. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's actually a lot of software going on that's telling it not to shoot because of the yellow jacket. Check out Timmy Mark III. Since last time I added the barrel and ammo canister. I ditched the counterweights and now my ammo canister is the counterweight. Next, I wanted to work on the tracer or blast of purple light. I made a compartment for two single cell neopixels at the top and bottom of the barrel. There's a hole for the light to exit out of. However, the plastic isn't opaque, so it glows with the light, making it look like a cheap toy. The ammo canister has a threaded lid so it can easily replace ammo. I also switched from yellow to purple and pink rounds to avoid the color recognition mode on the Husky lens. Version 2 of the tracer design moves the neopixels to the front of the barrel and triples the amount of lights used. In terms of brightness, this is so much better. Combining this with the colored ammo, this just looks so sick. When Timmy sees someone, he pops up and a third leg comes down. I'm not going to even worry about the support leg right now. We need two legs that can move up and down for when Timmy sees an enemy. The common way robot dogs provide lift is with motors in the hip and in the knee. I did some quick math to figure out that even with these big boy motors, we won't have enough torque to lift the approximate 10 pound load of the upper body. These motors are also pretty expensive, and since all the legs have to do is provide like a couple inches of vertical lift, I wanted to try to use only one motor in each leg. This design hides a motor in the hip and uses a 4 to 1 gear train to provide increased torque for lift. The hip is attached to a 4 bar linkage mechanism and as the hip rotates it drives the whole mechanism up. I think this first design is super clunky and it didn't work exactly as expected. Since the turret is top heavy I'm grounding the feet down with these 5 pound weights. They look super wide and goofy as hell right now. I think I'm going to make a concrete mold to get a heavy piece and a custom shape to weigh down the feet. One of you suggested using stick on tire balance weights as ballast weight. These were great because they're domino sized and I could arrange them better to the shape of the foot. I upgraded from these regular springs to gas springs. They're used in furniture doors all the time. They're filled with pressurized nitrogen and there's a piston attached to a rod inside. Since the bottom has a rod, its area is slightly less than the top, which produces a net extending force. These guys are 20 newtons or about four and a half pounds, and I'm gonna put one in each leg. The turret head weighs about 10 pounds, so these will be perfect for stabilizing the weight and keeping the system pretty close to equilibrium. I hid motors in the lower legs, and the gas springs will make it so that the motors have to do less work to move the entire assembly up and down. We only have to move up a few inches when an enemy is seen, so I'm hoping we'll have enough lift without throwing off the balance of the entire system. It looks so good. Tip over, wait, it's actually so good. Wait, this can it tricky. walk? Is it gonna be able to walk? No, it's not gonna walk. Let's power the motors up and see what we're working with. So we definitely have enough torque for the pop-up. I started using the ramp library to smoothly reach my servo end position instead of moving there in one swift motion. I designed and printed little rubber foot pads to prevent Timmy from slipping. They friction fit slide into the plastic and give Timmy's feet way more grip strength. I also added all the details in the feet, like these little feet horns and little circles. Now let's add the third leg. I modeled and simulated my design in SolidWorks and then printed the parts out. From there, it was just about syncing up the servos to the right angles as the turret pops up when an enemy is seen. I swear this thing looked way less sus in the CAD software before I printed it out. What do you say? How about we fix that, little buddy?
If we could angle the foot upwards and sort of tuck the lower leg in as much as possible, I think that would help a lot. I added a torsion spring in the ankle, so it's always angled upwards, but it can still flatten out when it lands on the ground. On top of that and tweaking the servo motor angles, I think I was able to hide the third leg pretty well inside the base. So I noticed some smoke coming out of the front barrel of Timmy and I really don't know what to do. Like, I think I burned out one of the motors um, and the place that I ordered them from are coming from California. So it's gonna take like a whole nother week just to ship them. Like I've already put so much time and so much effort into this. I don't know what to do. Like, this is so frustrating. Every time I try and solve something and like I get it to work, it feels like another five problems arise. I feel like I don't wanna do this anymore sometimes. Like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to feel inspired to like finish a project that takes so long and so much effort, but. After taking Timmy apart, I found this one screw loosened and started searing into the plastic flywheel causing the smoke. Sometimes it's hard to be as detailed as I'd like to be, especially while working on a deadline. It sucks that the motor's broke, but there are so many other issues with the turret, it's kind of okay because I have to fix those in the meantime. The recoil motor also broke, so I redesigned the turret head to house a larger one. The three symmetrical tooth design was now getting jammed though. I was able to fix it by moving to only two teeth. I also replaced the rubber bands with springs because some of you said the rubber bands might rot over time. For the ammo canister lid, I flipped the threads and added this plastic cap that squeezes down and acts as a gasket, preventing air from the vacuum from escaping. I also perfectly aligned the handle like in game. The new flywheel motors are finally here and it's time to hook them up. Next, we need to fix Timmy's scanning because it's really slow. It uses wire loops to slowly move the swivel motors until the camera is centered on the target. What we need is a way for the turret to see someone and quickly snap to them like in game. Matt from my discord had a great idea where we develop an equation to predict snapping distance. I needed to make my own shooting range so I got a life size cardboard of Dwight. The husky lens wasn't picking him up though so instead I just printed out Ross and taped them together. That seemed to work. Next we need to gather data points where the x value is the distance from the camera being centered and the y is how far the motor has to be turned to be centered. I built this little test apparatus for calibration and after getting like 20 data points we can plot the data in Desmos and draw a curve of best fit with a quadratic equation. Now Timmy has a way to predict how far to turn on one swift snapping motion based on previous data sets. Right now the equation is currently calibrated for a target at 10 feet, but the Husky lens can actually recognize someone at up to 30 feet. Finally, after months of work, I started to run out of bugs and problems to fix. Here's a look at everything working together. So it's gonna scan for a target. It's looking around. Once it sees someone, pops up, swings the leg out, and it's gonna look for me and then shoot. Also, I've made a package of files free for download in the description if you wanna make your own turret. Thank you guys and back to the video. Her wristband in game is pretty compact and she uses it to spawn her turret. I found reference images of the wristband and hopped into SolidWorks to mock up my design. The wireless transceiver had a larger range and was much more stable with an antenna, but I actually kinda of like the look of it. I printed out my design and hooked up the electronics. I also added some lights that look pretty awesome in my opinion. Let's give this thing a try. Okay, so by default, Timmy will be in an automatic scanning mode and will be looking for humans to shoot. But if I flip this toggle switch in the back, it will then look for my RC wristband and will be ready to fire on command. At this point, I've added all the functionality I want and it's time for paint. This is the most amount of parts I've ever had to sand, prime, and paint in a small time frame. I almost went insane. I always start with the low grit on my orbital sander, then I apply a coat of wood filler to fill in any large gaps. After this super tedious process, I start to apply layers of filler primer. I repeat the filling process until I'm happy with the surface finish. There were so many parts, it took like a whole can of filler primer to apply a layer to every part. Then I hit up the promised land of paint, Home Depot. I got two different yellows because I wasn't sure which one matched the canister lid more closely. Luckily, most of the parts are one solid color, but a few of the main parts require four or five different layers of paint for different colors. For each layer of paint, I let it cure for 24 hours, so this part alone eats up a lot of time. I wanted to add a little worn battle damage look, and sanding the edges to bring back some of that gray filler primer really helped with this. 
A friend of mine helped me cut out vinyl masks for the bird face on our Cricut so I could get really fine lines for each of the colors on the bird face. I was told by some of you guys who've done this before that this was the best strategy for something so detailed like this and don't worry, I trust. Oh, nice. That actually looks good. Yo, that was sick. But it was scary because I was applying the masks on top of each other, and I wouldn't know if I messed up or it looked bad until the end. That looks sick. I wanted to add the little ammo belt detail and first tried out some orange ribbon. It looks awful. I think I needed something with thickness to it. One of you guys recommended using Cosplayer's EVA foam. I covered it in a layer of Plasti Dip and then masked off a thin strip down the middle. I think this was the move too because I could match the orange I'm using to the orange on the rest of the build. Now that the paint is complete, time to put this thing back together. I changed the software so that when the legs lift up, the turret head rotates downwards to appear more like a pop-up effect. I also replaced the two potentiometers with the joystick for control. Now it's time to pack Timmy up and bring him to LA. Designing for the turret to be easily taken apart and put back together was a whole nother issue in itself. I got these big hard shelled cases with customizable pluckable foam in the inside to ensure Timmy doesn't break on the plane. I'm planning to bring Timmy as a check-in and I was pretty nervous about it the whole time if they asked any questions. Excuse me TSA, yeah that's just my auto sentry gun turret that locks onto humans. No issue here, keep it moving. The turret got through no problem. Did get stopped from Miralax though. I'm getting griefed. We have arrived. Let's get it. After landing in LA, we went to Red Bull right after to set up. One of the motors started smoking actually, and I had to think on my feet, but we figured it out. I'll talk more about it in my bonus content. The Red Bull this office was probably sick. the coolest office I've ever seen. They had a whole studio with fancy lighting and cameras to get insane shots of Timmy. The clips you're seeing now were shot on my iPhone, but I'll link their video in the description if you want to check it out. It's the conclusion video to the build where I show off the turret to Keo in person, and he asked me questions about the project. I was pretty nervous beforehand, but honestly, the Red Bull team and Keo were so easy to work with it just felt like hanging out with friends also if you want to see the turret yourself i'm going to be showcasing the turret at red bull's double agent event on october 2nd i'm super excited i heard ludwig's going to be there and i'll get to show him the turret not yet wait for the vacuum to go on there you go <laughs> 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 After a fun day of shooting, I snagged some free beverages and we're headed to Champs. We were actually trying to bring the turret to Champs, but it didn't work out. Maybe next time. It was so cool to get the chance to go to Champs, though. This was the first Valorant esports event I've ever been to. They gave the crowd bracelets to wear that synced with the game. When the spike ticked, so did our bracelets. I also went to FanFest and saw a giant wingman, a cypher truck, and we were 15 minutes late to doing a meet and greet with Michael and Lily and just missed it. However, we were able to sneak this clip in. Thank you for paying attention. Michael! Hi! What up? After seeing all this pro play, I wanted to play a bit more myself. Alright, time's up, let's do this! Relax! I've already sort of everything. <laughs> Bomb buddy out. Piltover! Piltover. 